The Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. You know, friends, in a cigarette, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And... This is Don Wilson. I think you'll agree that smoking enjoyment depends on the taste of your cigarette. For nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner and fresher and smoother. You see, Lucky's better taste starts with fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. But equally important, Lucky's are made better to taste better, made round and firm and fully packed. That's why Lucky's draw freely, smoke evenly, and give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother taste. So, friends, get the one thing you want most in your cigarette, better taste. On your next trip to the cigarette counter, be happy, go lucky. Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. You'll find... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last Monday, Jack Benny took the Super Chief to New York to attend the testimonial dinner given by the Friars Club in honor of Bob Hope. Let's look in on him as he packs for the trip with the help of Rochester. Well, I think I better take some more warm clothing. It gets pretty cold in New York this time of the year. Yes, sir. I've already put in your long underwear. Good. I also want my heavy woolen socks. Uh-huh. My heavy suit. Got it. A couple of thick sweaters. Uh-huh. My hat and my woolen scarf. Yes, sir. My earmuffs, sheepskin-lined coat, and fur-lined gloves. That ought to... Wait a minute, Rochester. What's in that bag? You may get hungry, so I put in some whale blubber. <laughs> Never mind the jokes. It does get cold in New York. Well, let's see. I'm going to be on the train for three days. I better take something to read. Rochester, pack about five or six of my books. You know, the ones on the table there. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Which book did you drop? The one from the California bank. <laughs> well, watch it next time. I wonder whether I should take my violin along or not. Should we put it to a vote? <laughs> Never mind. Eh, I'm not going to take it. Now, Rochester, if anybody wants to contact me while I'm in New York, I'll be at the Acme Plaza Hotel. Again? <laughs> Yes, and you don't have to use that tone of voice. They treat me very nice at the Acme Plaza. In fact, this time, they're giving me the penthouse suite. Oh, that's nice. That's the one that underlooks the park. <laughs> Never mind that. Since you were there with me last, that hotel has made a lot of improvement. You remember how every time I'd want to take a bath, I'd have to stand in line? Yes. Well, they put a bench there now. <laughs> and not only that, they... I'll get it, Rochester. Yes. Hello? Hello, Chuck. I have to talk fast, so don't interrupt. My father's found out that we're in love, so if we're going to get married, Chuck, we better elope. I'll get my things ready, and I'll be waiting for you. Goodbye, Chuck. <laughs> hmm. Who was it, boss? It's the wrong number. Must be a wrong number. I don't know any girls whose fathers are still alive. <laughs> yeah, I hope Chuck gets in touch with her. It'll probably spoil her honeymoon. Well, I've got everything ready, Mr. Benny, but you haven't got enough baggage. I know. I left mine in Palm Springs. But Bob Crosby's lending me a suitcase. He promised to bring it over. See, I like going to New York. East side, west side, all around the town. You know, yeah. I, I sure wish I was going to New York with you. You need me, boy. Now, look, Rochester, I don't need you. 
I know that all you want to do is to get to Harlem, and I won't see you again until it's time to come home. You spent all your time there with your girlfriend, Dorothy. But, boy... No buts about it. The last time we went to New York, you didn't even wait till the train got into Grand Central. You pulled the emergency cord at 125th Street. <laughs> I know. Well, what was the big emergency? I had to get over to Dorothy's fast. Her boyfriend was the engineer on the train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. East side, west side, all around the town. I'll be at the Acme Plaza penthouse two flights down. <laughs> I'll answer the door, Rochester. You get my toothbrush and shaving stuff ready. Oh, hello, Bob. Hi, Jack. I brought the suitcase. Oh, thanks a lot. Come on in. Let's bring it in the other room where I'm packing. Ah, oh, hello, Mr. Crosby. Hey, that's the most expensive bag I've ever seen. And look at those initials in gold. B.C. Gee, Bob, this bag must have cost a lot of money. Oh, I don't know. You say it's Bing's. He loaned it to me. <laughs> oh, well, it certainly is the most beautiful suitcase I've ever seen. Let me open it. Gee, and it's just as beautiful on the inside. It's all fitted and made into sections. Bing had it made that way. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What are all these compartments? Or, well, they're all marked. See, uh, handkerchiefs, socks, ties, 20s, 50s, and 100s. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. Now I see. Some of the green rubbed off there. <laughs> well, this is the most novel suitcase I've ever seen. Well, Bing thinks of everything. Jack, uh, turn that little knob there on the side. The side of the suitcase? Mm -hmm. This knob here? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, turn it. Well, I'll be darned. Minute made orange juice. <laughs> well, Bob, it's awfully nice of you to lend me this bag and... Hey, wait a minute. What's this? Looks like a little sunbonnet. Oh, Lord. We packed the baby's things in this when we went to Palm Springs. I guess we forgot to take some of the things out. Oh, uh, isn't this cute? The tiniest little dress I've ever seen. Look at these baby shoes, too. Bob... I mean, what does a baby need with all these handkerchiefs? Jack, they're not handkerchiefs. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Jack, I've got to be running along because... Excuse me a minute, Bob. I want to answer the phone. Hello? I'm all ready, Chuck. I've got my bag packed and I'm in my room on the third floor. But I'm a little nervous, so you'll have to carry me down the ladder. Goodbye, Chuck. <laughs> That's ridiculous. See, I haven't thought of eloping since I saw Theda Berra in Passion's Plaything. <laughs> Why can't that girl get the right number? Is there anything wrong, Jack? Yes, Bob, but it's a long story. Huh? Well, I, got, I think I'd better get back home. You know, I'm rehearsing a new song, and Charlie Bagby's coming over to accompany me on the piano. Have a nice trip. Oh, thanks a lot, Bob. Give my regards to Charlie, and... Hey, wait a minute. Say... Could it be? No, I guess not. <laughs> but then again, nah, it's silly to even think that. What's the matter, Jack? Well, tell me, is Charlie Bagby ever called Chuck? Huh? No, why? Well, some girl keeps calling me, and she's going to elope with some guy named Chuck. Oh, that wouldn't be Bagby. He hates women now. What do you mean now? Well, Jack, didn't you know that Charlie was all set to be married? And on the very day of the wedding, his girl jilted him? You mean she stood him up? Yeah, but he fell right back down again. <laughs> well, I don't blame her then. Say, Bob, what's the name of this new number you're rehearsing with Bagby? Well, it's called Keep It a Secret. Would you like to hear it? Yes, yes, go ahead. Now, if you see my darling with somebody new Keep it a secret Whatever you do Why should you tell me And break my poor heart Then foolish pride Would just drive us apart 
Betsy, my darling, in some rendezvous, hating the town with a boy she once knew. Pay no attention and just let it be, but keep it a secret from me. If you see my darling in some rendezvous, painting the town with a boy she once knew, pay no attention and just let it be, but keep it a secret from me. That sounded swell. It's a real catchy tune. Well, gee, thanks, Jack. Well, I guess I'll run along now. Well, goodbye. See you when I get back. And, oh, by the way, enjoy yourself. Oh, and thanks. Say, you know, enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy yourself. By the way, you know the weather in New York can get pretty cold. Are you taking your long underwear? Jack, I said, are you taking your long underwear? Mr. Crosby, you're new here. We've done all those flap jokes. <laughs> Yes, Bob. <laughs> well, so long. So long, Jack. <laughs> now, Rochester, uh, put all the extra clothes in the suitcase and hurry, will you? I want to be ready when Miss Livingston picks me up. Oh, Pauline. Pauline. Yes, Miss Livingston. Uh, if there are any calls for me while I'm gone, tell them I'll be back as soon as Mr. Benny's train leaves. Yes, ma'am. Miss Livingston, what's he going to New York for this time? Well, the Friars are giving Bob Hope a testimonial dinner, and Mr. Benny is supposed to make a speech there. Is he a good after-dinner speaker? Oh, yes. You should have heard him last night. He made one of the most stirring after-dinner speeches I ever heard. Where was that? At the thrifty drugstore. <laughs> the thrifty drugstore? Yes, right after we had dinner, he jumped up on the counter and complained about the bill. <laughs> Gee, Miss Livingston, what did you do? What I always do. I paid it and we went home. <laughs> anyway, I hope Jack is a big hit in New York. You know, Miss Livingston, I don't think it's fair. Uh, what isn't fair, Pauline? Well, Mr. Benny goes to testimonial dinners and gets all the glory, but you're the real star of his radio program. Oh, Pauline, you're sweet, but Mr. Benny has more to say on the show than I do. Straight lines, yes, but you get all the laughs. <laughs> Oh, Pauline. Yes, you do. And where would he be if, if, if you didn't read all those hilarious letters from your mother? Well? And what would happen if he couldn't make jokes about you working at the May Company? Yeah. And every week he gets a great big salary and all you get is a few dollars. Hmm. I never thought of that. Hello? Mary, what's keeping you? I ought to slap your face. <laughs> Miss Livingston, who was it? The stooge. <laughs> well, I promised to take him to the station, so I might as well do it. Well, here we are at the station. It sure is nice of you to let me drive your car, Miss Livingston. Oh, that's all right, Rochester. And now, boss, I'll park the car and take care of the baggage while you get your ticket validated. That'll make everything according to your schedule. Schedule? Yes. You see, Mary, I have so little time on this trip that I got everything planned. I catch the Super Chief here at 8 p.m. tonight. I'm in Chicago at noon the day after tomorrow. I get on the 20th century at 5 o'clock. 
Arrive in New York at 9 a.m. Go to my room at the Acme Plaza, take a nap until 4 in the afternoon, get up, wash, shave, and shower by 5, dress by 6, get to the Waldorf by 8, and attend Bob Hope's dinner. Then catch the plane at 11.30 and be home the next morning. Boy, what you won't go through to get a free meal. <laughs> Free meal, free meal. Come on, let's get into the station. Train now leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. Jack, I thought you told Rochester to take your bag. How come you're carrying that suitcase? Oh, I want to take extra good care of it, Mary. It's a very expensive bag. You know, it belongs to Bing Crosby. Oh. Say, Jack, let's go over to the soda fountain. I'm kind of thirsty. Just get a lily cup. I'll give you some orange juice. Uh, what? On second thought, we haven't time for that. Let's see. Where do I get my tickets validated? Attention, please. Attention. The Sunset Limited now leaving for Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Jambalaya. Son of a gun, we have big fun on the bio. <laughs> Mary, you wait here for me, will you? Okay, I'll go over to the newsstand and buy a magazine. Okay. Now, let's see if I... Uh... Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Oh, boy, I'm sure glad I caught you. You almost didn't, Don. It's just a few minutes of train time. I know, but it wasn't my fault. My wife and I took her nephew, Tommy, out to dinner. Tommy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I know him. He's that mischievous little kid, isn't he? Ah, he's not so bad, Jack. He isn't, eh, Don? That kid can get into more trouble. Well, as a matter of fact, he did embarrass me a little. I can imagine. That boy is the worst. What happened? Well, after dinner, I paid the check and left a couple of bucks for the waitress, and then we drove home. And when we got there, Tommy stuck out his hand and said, Uncle, here's the two dollars you left on the table. <laughs> Gee, what a wonderful kid. I had no... <laughs> The Union Pacific Streamliner now arriving from Las Vegas on track. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> now, Don, excuse me, I've got to get my ticket back. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. Before you go, the sportsman quartet came down to say hello to you and welcome you back. Well, that's all. Say hello to me. Don, I'm going away. I'm leaving. They know that, Jack, but they can't be here at the station when you come back, so they're going to say hello to you now. But, Don, Don, that's the silliest Take thing. it, fellas. Don, what kind of a thing is that? Hello, hello, Jack. Welcome home. We're glad you're back. We have missed you and your big blue eyes. Fellas, I'm not back. I'm just hello, leaving. Mr. <laughs> I'll be back on salary. You were looking at four hungry guys. Boys, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm going I'm away. <laughs> we're so tired of jumping on our pogo. Oh, welcome, welcome home. Promise never more to roam. You're just a gypsy in disguise. Hello, Lucky Strike. Ah, that's How about a Lucky Strike? Like a lucky strike. Like a lucky strike. Like a lucky strike. but that song could have made me late for my train. Now I've got to get my ticket validated. Attention, please. Attention. We have a special announcement to make about our lost and found department. It's been lost. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, there's the window where I'm supposed to go. I hope I don't... Uh... Hello, Mr. Benny. Why, Mr. Ketchum?
Well, what are you doing here at the station, Mr. Kitto? I'm waiting to meet my wife's train. She's coming back from Chicago. <laughs> oh, from Chicago, eh? Yes. Was she visiting relatives there? No, she was a delegate at the Republican convention. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Kitzel. The convention was held in July. What kept her so long? They let her make a speech, and she just finished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I take it your wife talks a lot, huh? A sage observation. <laughs> In fact, it was because of these that we almost didn't got married. What do you mean, you didn't got married? The preacher asked her, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? And she went into a filibuster. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kessel, you're joking. Joking, he said. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad she's coming back today. This is our wedding anniversary, and when she gets off the train, I wouldn't even let her unpack her bag. I'm taking her straight to Niagara. Oh, Niagara Falls? No, Niagara the picture. I want to see Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like Marilyn Monroe, huh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, if you're so crazy about Marilyn, why are you taking your wife to the picture? I want her to see why we don't get along. <laughs> oh. The super chief departs on track nine in ten minutes. Well, I better go get my ticket validated, Mr. Kitzel. I'm going to New York. New York. How I envy you. What a city. How I'd like to see the bright lights, the tall buildings, the busy streets, the green fields. The green fields? Oh, you in Max Greenfield, my cousin. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I met them. Oh, by the way, Mr. Bennett, you can do me a big favor. Oh, I'll be glad to. What is it? Well, I got an uncle in New York, Willie Kitzel. Mm-hmm. He's like the black sheep in the family. Never works, can't hold a job, practically a bum. Uh-huh. The only way he gets along is when the family gives him a little spending money. Here, take this $10 bill and give it to him from me. Well, certainly. When I get to New York, I'll call him up. What's his phone number? I don't know, but he's living in a dump called the Acme Plaza. <laughs> Well, I'll see if I can find the hotel. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Now, let's see. Oh, there's the window. Attention, there. please. Attention. The new 160-mile-an-hour super streak now leaving for Phoenix, El Paso, St. Louis, New York, and maybe London. <laughs> What does he mean, maybe London? It has bad brakes. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. Hey, Jack. Jack, you got your ticket validated? No, I ran into Mr. Kitzel. Well, you better hurry. The Super Chief will be leaving soon. I know. Here, I bought you some magazines. The Saturday Evening Post, Reader's Digest, Collier's, and Jack, you'll love this book. What is it? How to Make Money Straightening Gopher's Teeth. <laughs> Mary, you're very funny. I may think so. <laughs> well, never mind. Attention, please. Attention. This is contrary to our policy, but there is someone here who wishes to make a special announcement. Go ahead. Chuck, I got out of the house myself, and I'm waiting for you. I would have been here sooner, but I stopped at the bank and drew out all of my money. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Coming! <laughs> Coming! Yeah! Huh? Oh, oh, excuse me, Mary. <laughs> What's the matter with me? I don't even know her. Now, Mary, wait here. I'm going to take care of my tickets at that window over there. Oh, mister, are you the man who validates tickets? Uh, no, I'm just here because I was born with this rubber stamp in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I want you to do is validate my ticket. Uh, very well. Where are you going? To New York. Good. Now, if we can just get rid of the smog. <laughs> Never mind that. I have... I have my ticket, but not my Pullman space. Well, would you like a compartment? 
No, no, I'm by myself. A roommate? No, I don't even need that. As a matter of fact, I don't even need a lower berth. Tell me, do you have any uppers? Well, I... Wait a minute. <laughs> Ask me that again. Do you have any uppers? Yes, and if you don't go away, I'll bite you. <laughs> You're very funny. You're my butler, think so. Now cut that out! <laughs> the super chief now leaving for Kansas City and Chicago. Jack, Jack, you'll miss the train. Hurry! I will if this man will stamp my ticket. Okay, there. Now go already. Look out, Mary. I got to run for it. Goodbye. Bye, Jack. Phew. I just made it. Oh, so did I. Oh, Chuck, give me a boost. What? Oh, she's not talking to me. Come on, Chuck, give me a boost. Okay, honey, give me your hand. Well, I'll be darned. It really is Bagby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thousands of people are destitute because of the recent floods in Holland. You can help these people in rehabilitating their homes and their lands by sending a care food, linen, or tool package. So won't you please help? Send your donations to CARE. That's C-A-R-E, CARE, Los Angeles or New York. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment. But first, a word to cigarette smokers. Nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For lucky strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Friends, the taste of your cigarette is all important. For in a cigarette, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner and fresher and smoother. You see, Lucky's better taste really begins with fine, light, truly mild tobacco. Yes, L.S. M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Good tasting tobacco, of course. Then, too, Lucky's taste better because they're made better. Made to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother tasting smoke. So, friends, remember how important better taste is to your enjoyment of a cigarette. And remember that Lucky Strike gives you the better taste of fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette. But most of all, remember to pick up a carton of Lucky's tomorrow. Yes, be happy. Go Lucky. Be happy. Go Lucky. Get better taste today. Now, let's see... After applying braces to the gopher's teeth, you apply pressure by tightening every three months. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. I'll just sit here and... Hmm. I wonder why all the passengers are going up toward the front of the train. I think I'll follow them and see. Everybody's crowded around the engineer. I wonder what he's doing. By the power vested in me by the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe, I now pronounce you man and wife. Oh, Chuck, now you're mine. All mine. Oh, uh, isn't that sweet? Good night, folks. Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. 